Hello and welcome to History 1111 World History 1 for Summer. Uh, my name is Mr. Kennedy. I'm going to be your instructor for the semester. And since this is an online class, I don't get a chance to see you face to face and give you a welcome overview of the class. So I wanted to make this video before I did any lecture videos to kind of walk you through the class and let you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, First of all, um, I am the department chair for social sciences. I have an office on the Carrollton campus. It is office 306 E. Um, you are always more than welcome to stop by my office if you would like to uh, get to know me or talk to me. Uh, I do welcome visitors. All right. Um, now, if you look, this is our Blackboard landing page. This is what it looks like when you first get into the class. And I'm going to enter student preview so it looks like what you're going to see here. On the left hand side you see a couple of different menu options. Home page, announcements, student center, syllabus, calendar, and then lessons, attendance, my grades, and then messages, and then upswing, tutoring. And if we click on lessons, you're going to see it says important. Complete the course agreement form. Uh, you cannot see anything until you do the course agreement form and that course agreement form is located here where it says syllabus. And it's actually the very top item there where it says course agreement form. Uh, the point of the course agreement form is just to make sure that you agree to what you're getting into. Every single one of our West Georgia Tech classes have that. If you're a new student, you'll find that out very quickly. If you're an old student, then you're probably tired of this. Uh, but just read through the questions. Uh, you agree to the, to the syllabus, including the course attendance requirement. You read the student code of conduct using this link right here. And once you understand that, you can click agree. Read the academic integrity policy. I understand that all work submitted must be original. You click agree and I understand it may not work with other students or any online resources including coursework unless authorized by my instructor click agree now once we have all of our answers in we click save and submit here is your verification that it was submitted and here you can say we answered all the questions right now why did we do that? If we go to lessons now, you'll see that there's a new folder here and this is all the material for the class. Uh, at the top, you see the link for this welcome video. Here's a place you can answer questions or ask questions. This link right here, this is our textbook. The cool thing about this class is I was able to find a textbook that is free. So if you are somebody who enjoys reading the textbook but not spending money, yeah, there are some people out there like that. Uh, this will allow you to read a textbook that's not terrible and 100% free. Now, if you are somebody who wants to buy a hard copy of this, you can do that. It is available on Amazon and it's available from the University of North Georgia. Or you could print it out if you have endless money and want to print 400 something pages. But this is a textbook just like any other textbook. Table of contents. Stuff to read, pictures, you name it. The next item down says Chicago style citation information. Because this is a history course, history uses a very specific form of citation for paper reading or paper writing. Uh, you might be familiar with MLA for English or APA for psychology. Well, history, anthropology, criminology, we use something called Chicago style citation. And these are just some links that will help you with what Chicago style looks like. I've got a quick guide, source evaluation, 
a style guide, and then the Purdue Owl Chicago Manual of Style. And the Purdue Owl, I don't care what type of paper you're re writing or what class the paper is for, the Purdue Owl is the absolute best place to go for any help with writing styles. So this is all your information here on Chicago style formatting. And by the way, in history, we always use NB, that means notes and bibliography. There are discussions for this class, and this is a rubric for discussions. Um, you can read this yourself, but just to summarize, make sure you answer any question you're posed fully Sometimes the answer does take a paragraph. Sometimes the answer only takes a couple sentences. Make sure that you take the time to look through the question and answer the question fully whenever you're doing discussions. There is a, a uh, assignment called a reflection paper you have to do in this class, and there are three of them. Now they are not hard, they are 100% opinion based. So there are some readings in the class I'll show you in a moment, and you're going to take three of those readings throughout the semester and just kind of summarize it very shortly, and then tell me what you think of the reading, whether you like it, dislike it, whether it makes you look at the subject matter differently. And the whole purpose of the reflection paper is to get you giving your own opinion, give you giving your own voice to something, and get you analyzing information. Now, a lot of people don't see how that's important to them, but when you get into the real world, when you get into a job situation, you're going to be asked to come up with ideas. You're going to be asked to analyze situations and this is just a low-key attempt to to get you used to doing that when you click on the reflection paper drop boxes folder here you'll notice that there's only one reflection paper open at a time and there are a couple of reasons for that number one I want to make sure that you don't accidentally submit your paper to the wrong folder and number two just to make it easier on me I've got over a hundred students during the summer and I want to make sure that I can spend time grading all of your work without being overloaded with too much to grade. There is a museum review drop box. You will be asked to go to one museum during the class. And I have a list of museums that you can go to. Each one of these museums this is a link you can click on. For example, maybe you've never heard of the Hills and Dales Estates. You can click on it. It will take you to their website and you can learn a little bit more information about them. Uh, same thing with the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. It's a website, you can explore more about it. Now, the reason I've added those websites is just so that you can look and see if the museum is a good fit for you or not. You'll also notice that I have the prices here for you. Uh, some of these museums are more expensive than others. Some are completely free. Some of them also have student discounts. So make sure that you take a look at this. Now what do you do with the museum review? Well, a uh, couple of things. Number one, it's about two and a half to three pages long double space it for half of your page or half of your paper I should say you're just going to tell me did you like the museum and whatever your opinion of the museum might be for the second half of your museum review you want to look at it like a historian would such as is there is there explanation of what you're looking at do the exhibits make sense are they in good shape or is there a designed path you're supposed to follow in the museum? Uh, so think about that kind of critically there. There is an essay for this class. It is four to six pages. I know that sounds like a lot. 
But what I'm going to do is make this a research paper based on just kind of whatever you want. If it's a subject that we're going to talk about in this class, then you're welcome to write about it. So if you are somebody who wants to know more about ancient Rome or Julius Caesar or maybe Alexander the Great or maybe Christopher Columbus or anything that we're going to talk about in the class, you are free to do a research paper on that. And then each week of the class is set up with a folder. And because this is a summer class, we're basically going to be doing two lessons at once. So for week one, we have to do the prehistory lesson and the Mesopotamia lesson. Week two is the Egypt lesson, the Hebrews lesson, so on and so on. And I try to make it pretty easy. You can see the dates that the week is in effect all the work that you have to do and then the due date for the work and then within each folder are the different lessons each lesson is set up exactly the same so lesson one student introductions the study guide these are the terms that are in the textbook powerpoint and lecture you'll notice the powerpoint is already here the video lectures i need to record through the semester so each week I will record the video lecture and I will post it here and the video lecture goes along with the PowerPoint to help you understand it. Usually those are going to be about 30 minutes long each since there are two lessons per week. It's about an hour of lecture just like if you were going to class one day. These are the online readings I was talking about. Sometimes they're primary sources Sometimes they're just short writings about the subject we're studying. So, New Women of the Ice Age, if we click on this, it's a link to this Discover magazine here. And it's all about how archaeologists, anthropologists, and historians are going back and looking and re-looking at how Ice Age women were important to their society. Now, what are the purpose of these online readings? Number one, uh, your discussion questions are based on these readings. And number two, it's the same readings that you would use for your reflection paper. videos there's going to be one video for each week sometimes two but not often and it's just to reinforce the information that's in the book reinforce the information that's in my lecture and these videos they're done by the crash course team uh, john green a very famous author is the narrator and the creator of these and they're usually 10 to 15 minutes long. The videos are used for your quiz. So you watch the video, you take some notes on the video, and then you take your quiz. Discussion, once again, is based on the online readings. And then just to show you, lesson two is set up exactly the same way. There's your study guide. PowerPoint, I have to put in the lecture still. Online readings, three of them for this class. Two videos for this one for a total of about 15 minutes. Your quiz based on the videos, your discussion based on the readings. Now I just clicked on the syllabus tab and this is the actual syllabus right here. This has all the information. This is kind of like the contract between you and I. And we meet completely online. Here you can see my name. Here you can see my email. And as I mentioned to begin with, I do have an office here in Carrollton on the Carroll campus. And you're welcome to stop by if you're in the neighborhood. You're also welcome to call. Now, if I am not here, you can leave a message. The messages do come to my email 
and of course they're on my phone so I can always get back in touch with you that way uh, email may be the easiest of course for us since this is completely online my, my availability all hours uh, Monday through Saturday 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. I can be available for email after 10 p.m. not so much because I have to put a, a toddler to sleep uh, also on Tuesdays I do have an in-person class in Douglasville from 10 to 12 so the answer to your email may be a little slow during that time period but if we have a break during class of course I'll check my email not available on Sundays though that is a family day um, many many things to do on Sunday that I have to take care of in-person office hours will be Monday here in Carrollton 1 p.m. to 3 30 and Wednesday 10 a.m. to 11 30 I try to do one morning session one afternoon session in case one doesn't work for you now what are we doing in this class we're basically looking at everything old so ancient Rome ancient Greece ancient Egypt you name it uh, the description goes into a little bit more detail the textbook this is just another link to that exact same textbook that I've already shown you here's a link to all the academic policies procedures I do recommend that you look at these and read these so you understand a little bit better what we do here at West Georgia Tech also if you look at this link right here it says help desk email banner web blackboard in 0365 you may or may not realize it but you all have access to office and that's a provision that's provided by West Georgia Technical College course attendance this is another important thing and you might be asking well if it's an online class how do I get graded for attendance I try to make that really easy uh, first of all attendance is 5% of your grade you'll see that here in just a moment for an online class if you complete some work for that week you get credit so of course I want you to complete all the work because that makes it easier for you to get an A but if for some reason you can't complete everything to get credit for being in the class that week you have to complete at least one thing whether that be a quiz a discussion or reflection paper whatever might be due that week so that's how attendance works for the online class plagiarism I hate that I have to put this in there but every semester there's somebody who plagiarizes or is caught cheating uh, plagiarism is a very serious offense uh, I have seen and heard of historians and professionals completely losing their career because they were caught cheating um, even in regular jobs if you're caught stealing somebody else's idea or property that that is intellectual theft and that can get you fired so plagiarism is a very serious offense uh, for this class if you're caught cheating and that could be copying from somebody else that could be stealing intellectual property that could be not citing your sources correctly and making it look like you you copied somebody's paper or somebody's ideas the first time you're caught doing that the grade is a zero for that assignment and if you're caught doing that more than once then I have to turn you into the Dean of Students uh, just to to um, meet the academic integrity standards and I can guarantee you and I promise you this any work you do that is your own work will score better automatically than work that is copied from others uh, Google hasn't taken this class your mom hasn't taken this class you're the one taking this class you're the one that knows how I teach what I think and what we're learning so anything that you do yourself based on this course will automatically be better and quite frankly it's probably harder to cheat than it is not to cheat just sit down do the work now how does a grade break down uh, there are two tests there's a midterm exam there's a final exam each one of those is worth 20 percent so your tests are worth a total of 40 percent those reflection papers they equal a total of 20 percent so take 20 percent divided by three that's how much each one is worth the museum review where you have to go to that museum that's 10 percent of your grade activities that is your 
discussions, that is your quizzes, any other work I may have you do, um, activities, that's 15% of your grade. The essays, 10% of your grade. And then participation, that's the attendance grade, that's 5%. For the exams, it says there will be two exams in this class. They will not be cumulative. So the beginning of the class up to and including ancient Greece, that's the first half of the class. And then ancient Rome up until European exploration, that's the second half of the class. Most of our tests, because it is online, will be multiple choice. There may be some fill in the blank. There might be some short essay, but the, m the bulk of the tests are going to be multiple choice. The reflection papers, mentioned them already, but here it is in the syllabus, it says there are a total of three reflection papers to complete during the semester um, worth 5% each. Actually, hold on, let me correct that, the joys of the times. There are a total of three reflection papers to complete during this semester worth a total of 20% overall. That's the correct wording. The reflection papers should focus on one of the assigned readings found within the Blackboard Lessons folders. Please use your first paragraph to quickly summarize the article you've chosen to reflect on. For the remainder of the paper, please give your thoughts, opinions, and ideas of the article. The best reflection papers are one and a half to two pages in length. Provide a clear opinion or idea and is convincing as to why you feel as you do. Now remember, this is an opinion-based paper, so if you read something and you like it, tell me why you like it. If you read something and you hate it, tell me why you hate it. Both opinions are perfectly valid. Both opinions are perfectly legit. Best way to do the paper, once again, first paragraph, just quickly summarize whatever it is that you've read in the course that you're interested in. And then for the last page, page and a half, tell me why you feel the way you do about it. The museum exhibit review. Students are expected to visit one of the following history museums and then write a two and a half to three page double spaced review of the museum. Your first page should include your thoughts and opinions of the museum, similar to a reflection paper. The remainder should be a historical critique of the museum. To do this, please consider questions such as the following. Does the museum explain the exhibits adequately? Does the layout of the museum make sense? Is there something the museum does exceedingly well? Is there something the museum needs to improve? Now you're not limited to those questions, but it's a place to start. And it's just something to get your mind going when you attend these museums. Now just like in that museum Dropbox folder, I have a list of the museums here as well. And because we start, we still are in COVID season, although things seem to be getting better, make sure that your site is open. Make sure wherever you go is available at the time you want to go. And I would recommend spending about two hours in a museum if you can. And for the locations, you know, we have people all over West Georgia, even some people further away than that who take these courses. So I've tried to find museums that are available pretty much everywhere. So there's some in downtown Atlanta, there's some in da Douglasville, there's some in Cartersville, there's some in Noonan, uh, there's even some in Columbus. So I've tried to do a very big area that you can go to with lots of different types of museums. So I really hope that there's something there for everybody. Another thing, like this Chief Van Historical House, you might notice this as free with Georgia Park Pass available from the public library. Some of these you can get into for free if they're state parks. Also, some of these have student discounts. So make sure you bring your student ID with you. If for some reason you don't have a student ID, just go to one of our West Georgia Tech libraries and they can make you a student ID there. Activities, your active participation is critical for the success of our class. Discussions are an important component of the course and you are expected to be ready to ask and answer questions. Um, 
the activities there the assigned quizzes assigned discussion boards any other participation opportunities we have research essay complete an original four to six page research essay based on a topic of your choice that we will cover in this class this grading rubric gives you a generalized view of how i'm going to grade you i'll let you read that there on your own and we'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks participation as i said just do your work it's the easiest way to get points then extra credit. Some people really like to do extra credit and others are going to need extra credit depending on where they are in the class. And I make extra credit super easy. If you go to a second museum and if you write me a second museum review, I give you two points on your final grade. Uh, that's more than fair. If you find yourself at like a 77.5 and you're like, I really, really, really need that B, all you have to do is the extra credit and that will bump you up to a 79.5 and 79.5 rounds up to an 80. Last but not least down here, this is your course schedule. And you'll find this course schedule in a couple different places. I have made it so that the calendar has all of your due dates. The due dates are here on the syllabus or all the scheduling is due on the syllabus. And the scheduling is multiple places in Blackboard too. For week one, which is today, if you're watching this on June 1st, all the way through Monday, June 7th, I run this class Tuesday through Monday. So everything will open Tuesday mornings at 12 a.m. and will close on Monday nights, 11.59 p.m. So week one, it's lessons one and two, prehistory in Mesopotamia, and you have to do your student introduction, complete the course agreement. You have two discussions and two quizzes. Week two will go through, through uh, Tuesday, June 8th through Monday, June 14th. Discussion three and four, quiz three and four, and your first reflection paper will be due there. Your midterm exam is the week of 629. Uh, you will have to have your midterm exam proctored, and I'll give you more information on that later. Other important dates, your research essay is due July 26th. Your museum review is due July 26th. The museum review, however, can be turned in at any time. So if you watch this video today and tomorrow you go to a museum, you could turn this in the first week of class if you wanted to. So the museum review can be turned in at any time but that is the last day. COVID-19 syllabus addendum, that's for you to read. Basically, if you are affected by COVID-19, because people are still being affected by that, just not in large numbers anymore, um, send me an email. Uh, there is an, a few protocols that we can do for you if you need extended time on, on work or something like that. So um, if you are affected by COVID-19, let me know. Faculty contact information. This is just another way to get my information. This is the same thing that's on the syllabus right here. And then the course calendar, again, this is the same thing that is on the syllabus. All right, so this is almost 30 minutes of your time. I do have to put up the two video lectures for you this week so i'm going to stop this lecture here uh, if you have any questions concerns comments anything that you need help with or need to know just email me call me or even stop by i love helping students i love talking to students and it's always nice to get to know online students since i don't get to see you face by face or face to face i should say so um, i look forward to a good semester and uh, good luck and good day.